welcome to Deadly Dames. So Claire and I recently did our top five fantasy films because we couldn't agree on ten. And after uploading those videos, the, the third Deadly Dame, who would be my sister Ali, decided, oh. hey, hold on a second. I want to do my top five fantasy films, so that's what we're doing just now. So do you want to tell me about why you picked these top five? Yeah, of course. I mean, the first one, uh, or number five on my list, was Time Bandits. It's just a really funny movie, but it's really dark as well. Um, There's some really brilliant mo movie moments in it, and I love... Um, John Cleese! It's Robin Hood. Yeah, oh, it's so funny. Um, but I guess when you look back on it as well, you... Like, as a kid, it was scary, but then, it's as an adult, it's still quite, like, uh, oh, like, that was quite creepy in that Like, movie. I think, I'm really glad that you picked Time Bandits, because I really, really had a difficult time picking between this one and The Adventures of Baron and Charles, and, and I think the thing with Time Bandits for me was that, as a child, I didn't really get the good against the evil part. It was quite, because it, it is a very dark movie it doesn't come across like that so as a child when you watch it all you see is the fantasy stuff you know them fighting against giants and traveling through time and robin hood and and stuff like that but you don't actually see how i mean i never understood the ending until i was an adult oh and it is yeah, a pretty brutal think, ending oh, yeah but i'm glad that it is on a top five list because it deserves to be there it's a brilliant terry Gillingham movie and if you've never seen it i would like 100 percent recommend watching time bandits and I think the thing with us is we used to love the idea, like as kids, just because he's just an ordinary child in this, that it just happens to be that the time bandits time travel through his bedroom and he gets pulled into the adventure and pulled along with them. And, and as a child, I mean, who doesn't want to think about that happening to them, where they get pulled into an adventure and start travelling through time and fighting against monsters? Yeah, and it's, it's just dark, scary and everything else with it so it's just a brilliant movie but um your fourth film which yep. again i kind of believe i missed but is the amazing crow um best weapon ever yeah it's quite a cheesy movie as well it's like but it's kind, of, <laughs> it's kind mm. of why i like it as well it's like a cheesy love story um it is scary though. And, yeah oh, there's some that really bit with the wizard dies and then the fake wizard come back and he kind of makes that invasion of the body snatchers sound oh it's it's awful <laughs> and it's then the spider me. as well the woman in the web oh i know so it's just oh so, but it's a good adventure film like it's a solid good adventure film and it is a movie that desperately mm -hmm. needs a decent blurry and there's not a boring moment in it it's just kind of one of those movies that's always got something happening in it um it's like and as a kid it was just brilliant to see it all just Basically, from start to finish, just action. I Do you know, know, so and it's, it's the only really movie out there where you're going to get Liam Neeson and the guy that played Mark and EastEnders in the same bloody film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, folk will probably don't know what EastEnders <laughs> is, but Google it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm glad the crow got to be on a, a list as well. <laughs> Your third one, which uh, I'm glad because it was on my list as well, so as well. Oh, I just love Willow. It is basically such a brilliant movie. Um, again, it's it's kind of the same. It's quite a, it's got scary moments in it. It's full of fantasy and fun. But even as a like when you look back on it, you think that's quite a lot. Like kids' movies these days are, are like Disney, like Frozen or something like that. Is like the kind of modern one. And back in like when these movies were made, it was quite dark. It had quite a sinister underplaying to it as well and you're like Ooh. I mean just the scene in Willow where everybody gets turned into pig dolls I remember thinking that was terrific because you hear like the pain of them getting turned into pigs you're not going to get that in a movie these days really, oh and the you? evil queen as well is just scary I know which is so funny because she gets taken down with a simple pig trick <laughs> <laughs> someone said that to me recently and I thought God, you're right, man. He really does get taken down. Oh, remember we used to make the the noise when I find to which she's fighting. That was so funny, and I love the part where Willow finds the the good witch. Uh, I can't remember her name, and she and he's trying to turn her from like a creature back to a person, and she's like, "I'm a beautiful woman," and then it turns into an old bug. And you're like, "Oh, it's just really I think funny." It feels real as well because you think of like modern movies it's kind of mostly cgi i know some has got practical effects but these feel really really real because 
it doesn't really they well, had to really think about what they were and i'm not saying that cgi is not good because i'm yeah, sure it's oh, sitting definitely. for hours at a computer making things look that good i mean like have you seen jungle book yet no i mean like that whole movie is cgi and it's amazing like it's really really amazing to watch apart from mowgli but there was just something magical about knowing that things were like i mean think about the the, the dragon scene in this with the two-headed dragon i mean that's stop motion and there's just something amazing about watching yeah. practical effects and we like grew up in the eighties as well. We... Let's get brilliant. Mm-hmm. That's what me and Claire were talking about. Like yeah. Medusa seen that. That bit's amazing. Oh like, yeah. And um, it's just something magical. We grew up in the eighties, and I think for us, the eighties movies will always feel like the most magical period in time because mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I don't know why. I just think the eighties had like a magical feel for. Well, I'm sure the the nineties and the noughties and that brought brought some good films with them too, and even. Like the 70s have got some amazing movies but i don't know if it's just because we grew up in the 80s but movies that like willow i mean they just always have a wee special place for us yeah and the fact that like cgi as well thinking of movies that could be made now versus what they might not have been able to make because of cgi now but at the same time i still there's always a special place for stop motion and practical effects and all that sort of thing or even sometimes like you see in this where they've got like the little brownies um and you can obviously tell that they're I'm like yeah they've been put in place it. you know uh, but it still feels it kind still of works, more real it? yeah it feels good it's it, it sometimes even feels more real than cgi oh, i just thought a really good fantasy film that yeah. real girl and the little people oh yeah uh, but that's like a really really happy feel-good movie yeah i know but they the, i was just thinking of like a movie that makes people look tiny next to normal size oh people. yeah but it's great like even remember jack and the beanstalk when we were a kid it was like that as well like making mm-hmm. jack look small next to the giant i don't know i just i just liked the camera trickery i liked it when they had to be really clever to make movies happen where and as i said like i, I couldn't do cgi so obviously it's amazing that people can do cgi but it's almost like it takes away the having to think outside the box to get things done Aye. But your second favourite movie is actually a more modern one. But yeah. it's all practical effects, which is good. And that is one that I kicked myself for completely forgetting about. Oh, Pan's uh, Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth is great. I mean, I think it's, as you said, it's like a movie in two halves because it's obviously got a really serious storyline running alongside this little girl's fantasy. And then it's one of those as well, Do you? is it real? Is it not real? Is it in our mind? Because they leave you thinking at the end, could it be a girl's fantasy? Like Bridge and Terabithia was a bit like that as well. Yeah, or could it be real? And I like to think of it as being real. It's got amazing creatures in this movie. Oh, and scary, absolutely terrifying. Like the the guy with like hand eyes, I can't remember what he's called. But he always remember he's Well, the guy in the front cover as well, he's brilliant. Uh The the whole effects in the The whole movie is brilliant. But no, I think... uh, Pan's Labyrinth was a genius movie. In fact, Pan's Labyrinth was one of those films that, remember when I spoke about in a previous video, you get a movie that makes you sit up and really take notice. Mm-hmm. And, like, you kind of put it on and you just put it on just to well, see what it's about. And next thing you know, you're pretty much super glued to the screen. Well, Pan's Labyrinth did that to me. Yeah. It's such a clever it's, film. It's weird, though. I seen Devil's Backbone first. And I remember it came on TV and I was meant to go to bed early for work and I stayed up the whole night watching it and I just thought it was amazing. So when I heard of Pan's Labyrinth, I thought, I have to see this movie if it's as good as that one. It's a completely different type of movie, but it was just amazing. I mean, the the characters, the visual effects, everything about it. And I loved that it was really dark, really sinister. And then you had the whole fantasy side of it and... Oh, it very was just, sad actually as yeah. well. Really, really sad. But I think for the type of like the tone of the film, it, 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 the ending was what was going to happen. It was a very good movie of mixing in the reality of war with fantasy. Mm-hmm. And I just think that out of all of uh, Del Toro's movies, for me, this he, I don't know if you'll ever be able to top Pan's Labyrinth, but I guess that's just my my view yeah, on it oh, definitely perfect do you know i thought after watching devil's backbone there's no way you know like any other movie that that you know he does could beat it but i just thought oh and it was one of those movies like as you're saying you do get movies like you watch the snowpiercer and it's like oh it's just one of those movies that mm-hmm. take you back this was a hundred percent one of them um 
my other half, who's not really into movies as much as me, watched this and he was blown away by it as well. He was like, oh, that is a really good movie. Um, and he's never liked that to anything. So it just goes to show you, even people that are maybe not horror or fantasy fans or can still love it. movie fans yeah. in general can love this film because it's that well done. Mm-hmm. Or oh, just that creature that the actual creature itself will stay with you for life. Yep, definitely. <laughs> You're definitely never going to walk in a room and go, mm, look, I'll just eat one grape. No, no. Not with that creature in the room anyway. <laughs> Although I'm a bit of a greedy bugger, I might. I <laughs> might <laughs> chance. <laughs> um, so your first, your first choice, Yep. which, let's face drum it, roll. I knew it was coming. <laughs> That's my drum roll. It's <laughs> like a drum. I don't know what that was. <laughs> it's like, it's but like I knew this was drum. coming because this is a film that me and you watched all the time as kids. Yeah, Labyrinth. It's just... Oh, uh, we watched it a thousand times, I think. Um, it's just amazing. I've got it on DVD and it everything just, still, and that, yeah, and I just can't get rid of it. It's just... We know every line pretty much to the song. Yeah. Just, uh, oh, it's just a brilliant movie. I'm See if you ever baby, feel... <laughs> hard as could cry. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and there was a bit in it as well that somebody who also likes movies showed me, um, which is the two creatures when they're turning the slab around. Um, isn't it about they'll turn the slab around and talk? And if you turn on the subtitles, though you can't audibly hear them say anything. They do say stuff. They do say stuff. So mm-hmm. if you haven't done that yet, put the subtitles on.